Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. Years ago, when our children were little, we found a pattern for this little climbing bear and actually made one for all our kids and many of their cousins. But he's flat. It's time for the next generation. It's time for climbing bears for the grandchildren. So now, let's make him round wood turn. It gives him a lot more character, a lot more pizzazz, nice walnut, shiny. These wood weren't so pretty. I'd try and put a face on him, but I think he's pretty enough as is. So for the next generation, let's make a climbing bear. This will be a split turning. I've sawn this walnut in half, sanded it flat and smooth, and glued it back together again with browned craft paper in between the two pieces of wood. Roughing goes about the same as usual. I don't have a huge spindle roughing gouge. Not sure I want to part with over $100 for a single purpose tool when a standard gouge does a reasonable job. I'll mark off some approximate dimensions. In the end, I did not follow them very closely. At first, I considered incorporating the hind legs into the main turning. Later, I decided to make them separate, like the front legs. I decided to mount the wood in a chuck, so I quickly cut a dovetail and remounted the wood. Then on to finish the body. Then I switched to a large skew to get a smoother cut. I still need some skew practice. It still gets away from me sometimes. Then a little rough sounding since I'll be doing more work on the body later. Ultimately, I parted off the body, then using a hammer and a chisel, I split the wood into two bare bodies. Now for arms and legs. More roughing out a chunk of walnut. Here again, I'll cut a tenon on the end. Since I'll be using my pin jaws, I'll leave the tenon longer for a better grip. I'm using a soft white artist's pencil to mark lengths on this dark walnut then on to form the first arm. I'm using a 3 8 inch tenon to join the arm to the bear's body. Then sand and finish with friction polish. Then on to the second arm, using the first arm as my template. By the way, I've had questions about the shellac-based friction polish I'm using. I ran out of what I had, then purchased some Mylan's friction polish. It is looking better than my previous batch. My end wrench tenon cutters also work well for tenon cutters. I typically cut the tenon to, to one size larger first, then switch to the final size. This avoids my fear of overcutting when cutting down from very large diameters. I don't recall whether the first foot was the left or the right foot. About all I know is that the hind feet are a lot like the front feet. 
I added a large bead on the bottom for a foot for some additional character. A rubber stopper on my live center prevents putting a mark on the wood but still keeps pressure on the wood for safety. If I happen to hit the rubber with a tool, no big deal. I ran out of wood before finishing the second hind leg, so I had to rough out another piece. Pretty much the same process, except I'll start with a shorter piece of wood. Now for the top bar that the bear hangs on. No dowel here. I'll turn another piece of walnut, dressing it up with a bead on both ends. I'll use the remainder of this piece of wood for three small beads, one for each cord through each arm and one for the cord that the top dowel hangs on. The biggest problem with these beads is finding them when I drop them in the shavings on the floor. Meanwhile, I sanded flats on the bear's body for each arm and leg, then drilled a hole to receive the tenons. Then I sanded the bear's body with a sanding pad on the drill press blending in the flats and adjusting the head a smidgen. After stringing him together, he's ready to test. I think he works just fine. The tension created by pulling the cord tight binds the arm, enabling the bear to climb with alternately pulling each cord. He's actually cuter than I expected him to be. I'll probably get a lot of orders from the next generation of kids and grandkids. That's all for this video please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Please always wear your full face shield. Goggles are just not enough. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.